The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. To my left, unable to use her left hand, it's Professor Beth Oljai. Good to be here. When is the surgery? Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's supposed to be within a week or two. Oh my gosh, like really? coming up. He said it was severe, so I'm freaking out a little bit about teaching symbolic logic. Oh my god. I'm left-handed. Are you, are you going by <laughs> look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it just occurred to me that she... <laughs> that's true. Right now. true. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I mean... I, Apparently I be- it got really bad really fast. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you had a very, very quick recovery, too, for the same reason that a lot of people are getting, like, major surgery... And just the surgery things they can do now are just incredible. Hold so. that thought. Yes, I know. Knock on wood. No, seriously. I just know you are. You're getting a hook, right? You're getting a hook. I'm gonna live in Ojai, California. Oh. Just like. Got it. <laughs> Somebody had to get the reference. I knew. I would assume. Um, basically, they open your. I don't know if he's doing endoscopic or oh. they put in. I mean, basically, he's gonna open my wrist and open the tunnel, right, so the ligament can move. But it's outpatient, so I'm assuming it's... This is what I'm saying. There was a guy in a friend's life fairly recently that got a hip replacement, and he was home within 48 hours. And I'm like, what year do we live in? It's like, whoa, mama. Incredible. Incredible. Right, right. That's I mean, incredible. when I had the surgeries done for the trigger finger, I was like watching the doctor do them. This oh, okay. So, That's we're now we're crossing the line. Drive through service. Yeah, exactly. I like some fries with my. With my yes. surgery. Well, they, they have drive through liquor stores. They have drive drive through anesthetic now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. well, isn't that the same? <laughs> uh, Professor Dave Chow is with us. Pleasure to be here. And uh, what surgeries do you have coming up? None. None that I know of. I, I prefer not to. Now everybody knows what the topic of the table is going to be. <laughs> getting old and what you have to look You're forward to. We're old, Matt. We're all getting old, but we, it's okay. We the Benjamin Button theory, right? Yeah, we're going backwards, yeah. right? Yeah. Every time Beth was describing some detail of her fruit future, oh. Dave was twitching. <laughs> his livelihood. Oh. His livelihood. Oh. Oh my my moneymaker is cringing right about now. My moneymakers. Oh, my gosh. Um, continuing around the table, Professor uh, Dan Maggi is here. Thanks for bringing some great cookies today. And yes. Dan. Why well, have joke? Dan. <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to wait till I get to that side oh, of the table. Okay. Equal cookies. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Equally awesome. Pleasure. Equally awesome. Very, very nice. Yeah, how's, uh, how's Westbourne? Isn't it funny that I live a block away and I'm going up less and less and less? I just can't handle $25 gallons of milk. That's my problem. <laughs> they are convenient. Yes. I'm pretty sure the milk is not $25 a it gallon. It feels that way as I carry it home on my bike. The but they're pr- I think they're... Produce section is even better than holidays. I, Holiday I, market has the better meat counter because I agree with that. Jaw dropping, but for yeah. produce, I think Westmore is better. No, I, I agree. They polish it up every day. Yeah, that's true. That's they actually true. have good Yes, oh, the they soup. do. Soup, soup. Yes. Oh. It is almost soup weather. That is for dang it's sure. Always I could weather. live on your soup. Yep. I'm not kidding. Yep. Um, continuing around the table, Professor Jeff Boats is here. We're so glad to have you here, Jeff. Long time no quip. Yeah, People I know. Making me hungry though. I want to <laughs> go get something to eat now. It's uh, like shocking that we're talking about well, food, you know? Because <laughs> that never happened. No, right? not not on this show, never. Tell folks what you've been up to, Jeff. I didn't even respond yet, but you've oh, got man. a couple of manuscripts <laughs> in the pipeline. Oh yeah, uh, I'm a writer now, basically. I, uh, uh, I'm kind of between agents on the first book, and I just finished the first draft of the second book which uh, a certain biochemist around here is going to give me feedback on. Pretty that's soon right. Now. That's right. It's awesome and exciting. Is I it actually... a, is it a spy novel? So yeah, a spy novel. Kind of, and, uh, James Bond kind of one of, the, one of the plot devices in the second book is, uh, has to do with nerve toxins. So mm-hmm. I talked to a lot of biochemist people because I don't know about that stuff, so I had to learn, right? Right. Cool. That's very that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, the you research, should. The research part of it's more fun than the writing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amazing. My, my browser history. I don't know. I <laughs> text me on the guinea pigs. Get some knocks on the door soon. It's oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So don't kill anyone. Yeah, don't close to writing. <laughs> yeah. Please empty your search history now. <laughs> um, Professor Stephen Manning is here with us today. Oh, very. Uh, I didn't even notice until I looked that you're wearing your UDMPU shirt. That's great. Yeah, I know. Yeah, That's why I took my jacket off. So, yeah, I love that shirt. I wore that on Labor Day today. I mean, this year, it's not today. Cool. But now that we're in strike mode in the city, everybody. That is yeah. the truth, right there. Aye, yeah. aye, aye. An immediate uh, political capitalization by both sides. Yeah. I hope it is over soon. Come to an agreement, I take it. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah. nope. They have a uh, they have a feisty president. That's all I'm going to oh, say. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we heard them talk at the uh, at the Labor Day parade. Oh really? They stopped. Yeah. He was one of the people oh. who was there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Luminaries. Okay. Nice. Yeah, he's, he's it's corporate he's greed. Feisty. That's the problem in Drew's like to testify, very brother. Feisty. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't, we, we would always traditionally, when we'd start negotiations, we would shake hands with the president. Right. And that's always happened here, even during bad times. Mm -hmm. And he refused to do that this time. When he, first time he got negotiators, the first time he got the, their proposals, wow. he crumpled it up and tossed it in the basket. He said, that's garbage, that's where it belongs. Mm -hmm. I heard him yeah. use other words, right. too, so. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. yeah so that's they're, true. They're, they're far apart, but. From uh, mentioning one uh, union president to another union <laughs> president, union uh, Professor Heather Hill is here with us today. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody told me that being union president wouldn't be quite this much work. Uh -oh. Lies. I, I know, I know, Lies. no, no. Horrible. Well, part of it, part of it is that, you know, Sean Bain keeps leaving voicemail messages for me, and oh I just gosh. don't know how to respond, you know? Oh, it just, yeah, well. Yeah. Just, oh, my Part gosh. of the Labor Day parade, part of the Labor Day thing we had, uh, there's a picture out there somewhere, five former and current presidents of the UDMPU. Carol Weisman oh, was there. Oh, the picture, that's right, Carol that was, was so there. great. Prasad, yeah. me, and uh, Sigrid, awesome. and Heather. That is cool. awesome. So, that anyway, I wanna, I wanna shout out to Michael Jason for the yummy coffee. Thank Yay. you, Michael. Michael the is coffee awesome. Is Hi, the coffee is always good. Coffee is always good. Irish so. coffee works wonders. The I door know. pops open and Professor Jim Tubbs pops in. Yeah, my 15-minute commute took 50. <laughs> what? Let me guess, you had to drive on I-96. Well, no. Oh, no. I was coming Uber. down the lot. Oh. It narrows down to one lane, oh, and it was backed up for three miles. Oh, oh my south. gosh. So I went over to the south field, which also narrows down to one lane, and it's backed up for two miles. So I went over to the green field, which is simply closed, <laughs> going south. Then I went over to... Oh, my, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, you should just walk here. here. Well, yeah, the the roads fixed or why here. do we always work on all the roads it. going in the same direction at the same time? I have a theory. It's we're trying to keep Ohio State people out of Michigan. <laughs> well, they're <laughs> successful. <laughs> successful. And, and Indiana and Illinois. And That's a motivation oh, I can get on board with. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I guess yeah. what, folks? This is a program where you can send us questions regarding anything. It's been a while since we've had some good like road or interstate questions. Yeah. Let's see what happens there. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send us the questions in a number of ways. Email us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook and Instagram, or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Uh, I have to say um, that I ran into a random alum on campus today, and I'll be darned if I can remember his name. I know his first name is Mark, but I'm sorry I cannot remember his surname. And he mentioned, um, I would put the gentleman in his 60s or 70s maybe, um, that he was an avid listener of the show back in the day, and I loved it. During middle school and high school, he listened to ATP and pledged to himself to come to U of D, which he ended up doing back in the day, and having every one of the profs on the panel for a class, which he also achieved. Wow. It was like wow, a collection. That's so cool. And he was just like, oh, and the last one was Edwin, and it was like the crowning glory of the whole thing. And he just, he had this like, sparkle in his eye, you know what I mean? He goes, what? He goes, hey, you're the host. What um, what uh, radio um, you know stations are you on oh. now? And I was like, eep. <laughs> Go listen to the podcast. So there was no there intellectual rationale for his course selections. I believe it was as random as... Yeah, exactly. exactly. 
just, 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 just stalking. Yeah. Speaking of uh, <laughs> random but random questions, we have a fact-based set of 15 questions with no <clears throat> single theme all over the place to tease your late Friday afternoon brains sent in by none other than Stephen Mann. Uh -oh. So we're going to take these questions now and see what we can do with them. <laughs> so he can give us hints but can't answer them. Right. No, it's true. It's absolutely Recusal. true. And yeah. I don't know anything about these. That's right. Okay. You can go you can, talk you can to Samuel answer. Alito about that. Yeah. Um, Heather was sort of on fire in our last recording. She was I like, heard about that, about entomology, and yeah. Stephen was on fire with jazz questions. That's right. Exactly. And Dan, we just put Kravich over here. <laughs> <laughs> he plays with that little curling set. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's right. The tabletop <laughs> curling set. Oh the little gosh. brooms are a little tricky, though. That's all. <laughs> They're like tiny. I keep it in the car when I'm stuck in. <laughs> oh, I'm that's one. nice. Yikes. I needed that today. <laughs> Did you actually give him one? Yeah, it's a little, oh, yes. little so tiny funny. little thing. It's not that so nice. funny. Professors, what and where is the country's highest security prison? Stephen what? remarks it's also the country's toughest. It prison. Is Australia. Australia. It is in Colorado. It's in Florence, Colorado, holding among others 9/11 conspirator Zacharias Musawi. So yes. Wasn't that where um, the Unabomber was? He's dead. Now. Yeah, yeah, I know. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Baby boomers refer to those generally speaking born between what years? Forty-five and sixty-five. I mean, I have to give it to you. It's forty-six to sixty-four. But I mean, what's a couple years between? Uh, um, it matters you know? a lot for those of us born in sixty-five. <laughs> oh, it does. It does because that means you're a old Xer, right? Darn right. Exactly. An exactly. original Xer. Me too. An ridge. An ridge. Follow up, who was America's first baby boomer? I mean, they love to chart these sort of things. You know how they always announce what the first mean? baby born in Detroit on January 1st at midnight and stuff like that? So would they have been born in um, January the first, 1946? 1946. Any, any? Well, wouldn't it be presumably the, lots of people. Wouldn't it be after VJ Day then? That would be the, I mean, isn't it supposed to be post-war? I don't know. Yeah, I, it, it's, you know, these things are the fluid. we would know? Or I don't think famous? so. No. <laughs> oh. Her name was Kathleen Casey Kiersling. Oh. But, you know. They... <laughs> Great. Why would we know Real that? Real obvious question. Yeah. <laughs> that was going to be my next guess. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I would have guessed Karen for a first name. Yeah. What was, yeah me too. <laughs> what was CBS anchorman Walter Cronkite sign off? And that's the way it was. And that's the way well, it is. It is. Well, it is. That's oh. the way it is. But we'll give it to you. Thank you. We'll give it to you. Well, Follow it is, up. It was now for him. That's right. Oh, unfortunately. Ooh, that's nice. Ouch. What was the sign off for the follow up? Is what's the sign off for the NBC Buddy Act of Chet Huntley and David Brinkley when they signed off the news? Were they smoking at the same time? Uh, likely. Same cigarette. Likely. <laughs> same cigarette, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I, can, I bum, can I bum the smoke? The double wide cigarettes? Yeah, exactly. Time for martinis. Let's just share one. Smoking's bad for you. This one I know less, although I'm not so young that I don't remember seeing David Brinkley do reports. Was that, that's the way it is? No, that's, that's that Walter Cronkite. Merle, right? yeah, no, so. Merle was. Uh, good night, good night, good night, good night. Good night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Chet and Dave were good night, Chet, good night, David. That's, oh. They said it to each other. So. <laughs> Sounds like a Bert and Ernie thing. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It actually does. I can does. still remember mm -hmm. my mother telling me that when she was in the hospital after giving birth to me, it was great because, you know, she got to watch Huntley and Brinkley and drink coffee and probably smoke cigarettes, as I'm sure she did. Probably. <laughs> probably. That was None of the young mothers wanted their coffee, so she got to drink all of it. There was a, that was a completely different time. One of the greatest... Um, photographic images in all of the history of American organic chemistry is Bob Woodward. He was a professor at uh, um, Harvard and he synthesized some of the most elementary molecules at the beginning of organic ever was. And he's standing over one of his grad students, by the way, fully decked out in a three-piece suit, the grad student, and a bow tie and a straw hat running a distillation. No personal protective equipment, and Woodward's got a giant cigarette hanging out of his mouth in the lab. And I'm like, that was a different time. That's, That's right. all I got to say. Wow. I can remember in college when people smoked in the classroom. Sure, yeah, same sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If you even watch a show like Mad Men, they're, they're constantly oh, smoking. Constantly. Yeah. 
Or the movie Good Night and Good Luck, right? There you go. That's a good movie. Yep. My calculus teacher at St. Bonaventure, he would smoke during class, and he'd call you to the board, and he'd blow smoke in your face if you you weren't doing it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he was great. He'd never never, uh, call anybody by their name. He had nicknames for everybody, too. I remember (laughs) Airbrush. My air brush would be this haze of color in the air, and there would be smoke hanging around it. Too. Was, oh, Not Professors, who was the only collegian at the June 1967 Cleveland Summit, which was a meeting of prominent black athletes who gathered in support of Muhammad Ali's refusal to fight in Vietnam? That is absolutely correct. Oh, Luel Cinder. Absolutely. Nice. Sorry. Yes, yes. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Quite courageous stance. It really cost him a lot. And he also, didn't he also sell off all of his championship rings to give money back to the city or something? That sounds about right. Mm-hmm. I think he yeah. did. He's, he's, pretty, pretty, he's pretty. He just did a cameo on. Was it Billions? No. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, it was Billions. It was billions. Yes, it was yeah. Billions. Okay. Yeah, with Paul Giamatti. Yeah, he was yeah. giving Paul Giamatti some advice. And, and the, the height differential is quite dramatic. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, <laughs> only yeah. assume. Oh, it could have been worse. Could have been. It was like me the time I met Jalen Rose. Oh, my gosh. Or, nice to meet on, you. Does anybody remember what? The, the Bruce Lee you know, game of death? We were talking yeah. about oh. that, yeah. That we was lunch. Mm-hmm. the height of Bruce Lee mm-hmm. and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. And Bruce Lee's about as, long, as tall as one of Kareem's legs. Right, right. Yeah, comes up right. His hip or something. Oh my gosh. When it, for a second, when you said, Where did we see him recently? I just assumed it was that AFib drug commercial because right. yeah, I see it all yep, the time. That's what I remember. He, he may need to make up some of the cash that he, you know, from well, selling well, the, the rings. The, the money that he earned on airplane? Right. <laughs> God, that's right. <laughs> Uh, greatest role ever. Oh, that's so great. My dad says, you give up during the playoff. That's not me, kid. Okay. Uh, okay. Covering Moving on. What is the only car company that tried to mass produce a car with a stainless steel body? DeLorean. The DeLoreans. I knew you'd know that. Bankrupt after building fewer than 10,000 cars. It was they were beautiful cars, though. They were beautiful. They were wrong size tires, back to though. The future. I back just read the in New future. Jersey, Trump bought uh, DeLorean's old estate r- around the Bedminster, Bed- Bedminster property. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Did, was it, remember, was it last year we also had that one question we found out, like, Big Lots owns, like, the majority of the spare parts or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Trump really? needed extra burial space, oh, apparently. <laughs> Professors, uh, what two universities, uh, hint, uh, both are Ivies, have built archives dedicated to the complex and layered history of hip hop, a genre whose origins are traced to a party in the Bronx in 1973? Columbia? It's not one of them. Brown. Brown. Dartmouth? I haven't heard one yet. Harvard. Yale. Harvard, I'm going to give course. you. Harvard. Cornell. And Cornell, yeah, oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, very cool Chris stuff. Cornell, right? Oh. Sorry. We Ron are Cornell celebrating you know, the 50th anniversary, the anniversary yeah. of hip hop. So yeah, why the heck not? Terry hey, Gross mm-hmm. had a wonderful series a few yeah. weeks ago. What word did newly elected Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders ban from Latinx. use in state documents? Latinx is correct. She the gender it's neutral. Insulting. Yes, yes. She thinks it is ethnically insensitive and pejorative. My father doesn't believe in math, so apple doesn't fall far from the tree. No, yeah. oh, God. So true. They have so a tree. How can you not believe in math? What's his, that's his, his quote. quote? That's his quote? No, well, someone, was, someone yeah. was quoting some sort of factual statistic that he didn't like. So yeah. she just had the, uh, <laughs> there was some town in the South that tried to repeal, repeal pie. Like 3.14. Oh, oh, oh you like lemon about, pie? I like lemon pie. She just had the, what's the information thing? You know, oh, that's you pie. Can, you can, <laughs> you can uh, ask for a Freedom of Information Act. Right. Pie, she tried right. to have okay. that banned in right. Arkansas. Right. Because she didn't want people to have access to uh, oh, travel right. funding. Yeah. I think what Beth's talking about is uh, uh, somebody who wanted uh, pie to be set equal to three because there's a, a passage in Second Kings that can be loosely interpreted that's as. That's probably it. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a bathtub for Greece that's 30 cubits around and 10 cubits across. So. Oh, gosh. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. What is a cubit? <laughs> <clears throat> but take back one kadam for the Hebrew God, yes. whose ark this it's is. Mm-hmm. God, mm-hmm. so. That's still only 3.1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what woman has climbed Mount Everest the most times? It's 10 times, by the way. It's a lot. Considering, I think everybody at the table is still at zero. 
So her name is, uh, it's going to be very difficult to. Uh, you think? Yeah. Is she going to be like the, um, the baby boomer lady again? Stephen climbed Kilimanjaro. No, he did. He, yeah, that's true. Margaret, yeah, he did Mount Clemens. Margaret, Barbara. Her, her name was Lakpa Sherpa. Oh. Uh, she's climbed 10 times. Sherpa? How that's many? Sherpa. Yes. No, it's true. It's a brand name. title. It is. It is. It's a brand name now. She's the only non-man who has ever done this sort of feat. How many men have climbed um, Mount Everest at least 10 at times. At least 10 times? Uh, 15? It's more. 20? More. 29? More. 46? It's, and they're all sure about it. It's 34. <laughs> it's 34. Oh, wow, I was close. Yeah. yeah. I was about to call Kendra. <laughs> I was yeah. out by one. You had two of them. I tried to get Kendra yeah. to come over and play with oh, us today. I, I should have brought Taco Bell She's her. busy. She's busy. Not excuse. Not excuse. Professors, Michelle Yeoh, who stars in the sci-fi film Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, is only the second Asian woman to be nominated for Best Actress as an Oscar. Who was the first? 1935. Her role was Kitty Vane oh, in The what's Dark her name? Angel. I yeah, I can see her. I can see the quarter. I can see. I can picture her. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some initials? The Dark Angel. Her uh, stage name uh, initials M O. She was born in Bombay, British India, 1911. May. When nominated, she hid her Asian May. and May. It's probably it, a Wong. I think it's a May. Mm -mm. Not it May. Is not. May. It is not. Mary. Ming. She died in 1979, age 68, after having a stroke. She had a very serious romance with David Niven. Yep, 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 yep. Um, yep. Uh, what is, I can see, I can see her. I don't have enough quarters in my pocket. I feel like when I say this, it's all going to uh, jive in, but we're, we're having we're trouble gonna... putting the pieces together. That's Merle Oberon was her name. Oh, Merle. that was Merle. That's not yeah. who I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> same here. Sorry, that's not yeah. who I was no thinking of. No disappointment on our part. Well, I think we're thinking of the same person. The Dark yeah. Angel was the name of it. I did not yes. know Merle Oberon. Mm -hmm. I guess that having of an affair with David Niven. Hot stuff, mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. Very suave and boner. Yes. Yep. Suave and boner. Yeah. Nick and Nora Charles. I'm just so repeating what yeah. Nick and Nora Professor Charles. Nick and Nora Charles. <laughs> Thin man, multiple. Multiple. What was the role in uh, Murder, by Murder by Death? death. No, Murder what, by what Death. Dicky and Dicky and Dick and Dora. 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 Dick and Dora. Dick and Dora. 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 Oh Dick and Dora. <laughs> Busy drinking my way all that money I married you for. Choo choo train. Uh, professors, one of 2022's top online catchphrases was "run shoe," literally running away from China, as many, especially young and educated Chinese, did during a very challenging year. Mm. It's a play on the Mandarin character meaning profitable, whose romanization "run" makes it code for running away or emigrating overseas. It's added to the character for study. Apparently, I just, I, I don't know if there's a question, Stephen. I just, it's a rant. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just a fact. Um, the character for study, Zhu, makes the meme something like the study of running away. That's, that's what it says. So I'm sorry to have uh, screwed that up, but, you know, we're going to count it as a free point. Okay. <laughs> it's a gimme. <laughs> that was very informative. Thank you. <laughs> it was. It was. Who was the last member of the U.S. House? to be expelled from that body. Ooh, and you all should know this one. It was a good one. What, Lauren Boebert from the uh, Beetlejuice? Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she that is ludicrous. She turns ludicrous. around to one of the security guys and she goes, point your finger at him, you know. Give me a break. Get your hands off me. Do you know who I am? You would remember this. You know what happened with this guy is that uh, it was Ohio, a uh, Democrat from Ohio. I believe that there were lots of things. In particular, he was using his staff to like do stuff at his house, like well, dust, lawn and work? mow the lawn, and stuff wow. like that. Um, yeah, you don't remember this. I think it might. The job experience. Yeah, it's valuable. <laughs> not Dennis Hensley. No, no, that's not what it says. It's like Kramer in Kramerica when he has the intern, right? <laughs> <laughs> the intern from NYU. Kramerica. And he gets called in by the dean. I believe in Kramerica. I don't think this is actual oh work. My God. Okay. You know, I'm going to tell you that it sounds like this intern is just sort of <laughs> helping keep a bachelor man's apartment clean, and it may or may not contain a chicken. <laughs> That was Jim Trafficant. It's such a weird name. Oh, right, it sort of yeah, stuck yeah. with me. Jim yeah. Trafficant uh, Jr. Yeah, so I guess that's a no. All right. Uh, the Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris has interred some 1.3 million individuals, a figure equal to about half the city's living population. Can you name three celebrated artists for whom it is the final resting place? Oscar Wilde. 
Jim, Jim Morrison. Morrison. Jim Morrison. Monet Mene. I mean, Abelard and Heloise. Absolutely fantastic. Hello, Jerry Lewis. The only one I haven't heard that's on uh, Stevens' list is Edith Piaf. So yeah, we, we covered all the bases. That's great. You all are. It's an interesting cemetery. Hard freaking core. I know. Isn't it like the Jim Morrison grave, basically the most visited grave on earth, or something yes. like that? It's... There was a bust there that has disappeared. Right. And but people keep leaving the little airline bottles of whiskey and packs of cigarettes <laughs> and joints are on the. The, uh, oh my the gosh! Rocks around there. Mm -hmm. I don't quite get the Jim Morrison obsession. I mean, not that I think the Doors weren't a good. Thing. Yeah, but, but the obsession is yeah. a little bit much. Just yeah. Weird. After death, especially. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Passed down through at least two or three more generations, which is to me still out of the ordinary. The Lizard King. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The United States has the fourth largest Catholic population of any nation. How many native-born American citizens? have been turned into saints? Oh, wow. Ooh. It's a good question. A I'm going to say none. Oh, no. There have been some. Oh, yeah. um, American-born people. Thirteen. Uh, it's a little high. Oh, Two. Eight. Seven. Nine. Beth said zero. And I was just, it's within the Kendra, um, you know. It's, it's just one. It's Catherine Drexel. That's the only one. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, Solanus Casey is on his way. He's on his yeah, way, so yep, and that'll be a, a great coup for Detroit. She was a, an heiress from Philadelphia that basically modernized the health care in that area, and, you know, it's sort of a Ben Franklin kind of thing. Her first um, miracle was finding a parking spot in Pittsburgh anytime. Oh, she exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, for the record, it is, it, I, I guess, actually, it's not even the Kendra error bars for zero, Beth because Catherine Drexel was canonized in 2000, so we went a pretty long time with it being zero, so i, I got to give you zero there. But I think <coughs> it's kind of cool that it was a woman who was our first... Absolutely. She was an heiress? She just ha had a lot of money She's sort not, of thing. She, yeah. Don't you have to be a person of the cloth? No, I, no, no, absolutely no. not. Does so it mean there's hope for me? There is. Yes, no, there's hope really for you. Dan, Get on this miracle. Dan, Dan. How are we nominating you? There's a Drexel gosh. University, uh, isn't there, in Philadelphia? Well, that's named after her, yeah. yeah. Drexel, yeah, Drexel, Drexel Dragons. Yeah. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Okay, it's time to go to our list from the uh, um, Burroughs family oh. of uh, imponderables. I will go to something. Uh, we have a couple minutes left here. Uh, a little bit frivolous, but it's still fun. Uh, they have written favorite Avenger superpower. Let's just you know sort of uh, broaden that and say you know favorite superpower? any superpower. Yeah. I mean I know what mine is because every single freaking time Deadpool one or two is on TV, I laugh my ass off so hardcore. And the one where uh, she's Domino and she just has a very very lucky the things happen to her. Lucky. That is awesome. That would be luck. a cool superpower. Well, there was a, a character long shot on Marvel Universe. Oh, that was his thing. Mm -hmm. The problem was whenever he'd get lucky, his friends would get unlucky. Ah, Some bad I see. Things would happen yeah, yeah. Or, or, or Black Cat. Yeah, oh yeah, Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else has bad luck around here. But... Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't mind superpower. Mystique's. Uh, appearance transform. Sure, sure, absolutely. I think she even looks cool when she's blue. Yep. Naturally. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Raven in more recent movies. Right. Yep, exactly. Yeah. That's a good one. I always want flight so I can go get better seats at concerts. So you just hover over, you know, hover over the crowd. I like that one. No yep. one's in this space right yeah. here. So I'll, uh, I'll float right here. Well, whatever here. you dream about, isn't that the one everybody dreams about? What, flight? Yeah, I think so. Oh, invisible. I dream invisible. That's oh. creepy, oh. though. <laughs> That's always stalker creepy. I mean, like, what are you, you going to do with invisible? Well, when I was little, I wanted to be one of the tomorrow people, so I'm going to go with uh, teleportation, telekinesis. Okay, right. yep, yep. That is going to be cool. Okay. I kept on waiting for you, Jeff, to say something. I want to be one of the Herculoids or something. Like that. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll be Zan. I'll be Zan. Dan, you're thinking about this. I see the gears uh, turning. It would be time travel. Of course. Because you could get other powers by being able to go sufficiently into the future. Yep. You just want to repair your credit history. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> my credit is, is very spotless. Spotless. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> All right. Travel too, so she plan. I know, Heather, Stephen, come on. I, this is Super the yeah, you can all. you can see how they bloom as yeah, soon as or, you or plant you can, them. Or you can chase away the critters. You can chase away the whistle pigs before they get your plants. I, you know, I. I, 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 I always thought it was cool when 
become bewitched, they're always flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe flying. Either you could, that or turning water into You could wine. catch the whistle pigs from the air. Yeah. That'll get you beatified. So you can be the second American singing water into wine. <laughs> Well, Stephen, what, what you I, this is not my, my thing. I, 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 all I can think of is the Spider-Man because of the sticky finger things. And so you climb up walls and change yeah, light bulbs. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And I was thinking of that because really cool. this guy who escaped I mean, apparently did a crowd oh, yeah, walk yeah, up a wall. wall. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of the Spider -Man. But did yes. you hear his... Sure we I got to watch him do it. What he had to do, though, he like hid in the woods for three or four days and didn't eat anything. He drank Jeez. water out of streams yeah, he, he was and waited on the edge of tree lines he until was, dark. And he, he, was and he got watermelon. caught anyway. Got caught anyway. Thirteen days. Yeah, it's not bad. Netflix, you're greenlighted. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the way it's going to go. There'll be a movie out before the end of the year. Yeah. Where are they going to find somebody five feet taller to play him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is he short? I didn't realize he was that short. Yeah, he's no, kind no, of it's a... just camera angles. Tom, Tom no, 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 we can't take care of. <laughs> Tom Cruise oh, is like man. five seven. Tom, Tom Cruise and flats. That is the perfect segue. The time has come for us to say goodbye, Heather. Bye bye. Stephen. Bye bye. Jeff. Later. Jim. Goodbye. Dan. Bye. Dave. See ya. And Beth. Bye. Now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. As the professor is transcribed at the facilities of the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. As the professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo.